ESPN's continued disrespect towards Nikola Jokic hasn't aged too well. What exactly that disrespect was is coming up. Before this past Sunday, where he and the Nuggets stormed back to beat the Golden State Warriors for a seventh straight time in the regular season dating back to the start of the 22-23 campaign, the last time Jokic was in the Bay Area, this is what happened. Jokic has it. Clock ticks, got to put one up. Jokic for the win. Oh, it's good. Jokic got it off in time. And the Nuggets win it. Almost two months after that shot, Serbian Superman returned to San Fran, where he continued to own Golden State, just like he's owned the rest of the association over the past year. However, what the Joker's been doing for quite some time now has been slept on by the mainstream. I'm about to get to how ESPN disrespected him, then stay tuned for what we should be paying attention to in the film room when it comes to Colorado's finest. But just 11% of you watching at this very moment are subscribed, so if you aren't in that percentage, hit the sub box. As we looked at in several videos that have blown up dating back to the start of last year's conference finals, when the Nuggets would ultimately take out the Lakers, the hate the Joker had at the time crossed the line to xenophobia and racism at one point. This season, albeit not quite as bad as last in terms of Serbian hating, didn't start off much better. The October after winning finals MVP, ESPN ranked Jokic behind the eliminated in the first round Giannis Dedekumpo as the second best player in the NBA. On the other hand, here on D-Flow Hoops, it was an easy as 1-2-3 decision for your boy to rank Jokic number one in my top 10 player ranking from this past offseason. Given Nikola broke a 56-year-old record previously held by Wilt Chamberlain for the most triple doubles in a playoff run, became the first player in NBA history to record 30 points, 20 rebounds, and 10 assists in a finals game, and also reached 500 points, 200 rebounds, and 100 assists simultaneously for the first time ever throughout a playoff run. This was of course capped off by fueling the Nuggets to their franchise's first ever NBA championship. ESPN completely disrespected all of that, failing to give Jokic the respect he deserves, and it's not surprising for the network with a history of being biased against Nikola. Not just the mainstream media, but when it comes to the portion of basketball fans constantly talking about who the best player in the NBA is, instead of crowning the Joker by properly recognizing how he picks apart defenses as one of, if not the greatest passer of all time, on top of being one of the greatest post scorers of all time, all while drastically improving his defense from years past, all we're hearing about from both ESPN and hoop heads all across the globe is up and comers like Anthony Edwards, Luka Doncic, and Shea Gilgis Alexander, number one options who have yet to prove themselves by winning a championship ring, let alone even make the finals, of course, unlike Jokic. However, by Jokic setting records against Golden State, he again proved to us all that the NBA player we should be talking about as number one hails from Serbian ground. As Green himself would allude to on his most recent podcast, Jokic was dominating a generational defender in Draymond all game. Just as impressive was how Jokic fared in the signature matchup with Stephen Curry. Nikola showed us why he's unquestionably the best player in the NBA in terms of value as it stands right now. Conversely, in the historical conversation, Jokic still has more championships to win in order to catch up to Curry. What I'm saying is, Jokic is better in the 23-24 season. As much as we all love Curry, Jokic being the better player right now was proven by Denver's best player posting a combined 47 more points, rebounds, and assists than Golden State's best player. With 32 points, 16 rebounds, and 16 assists, Nikola Jokic passed LeBron James for the fourth most amount of triple doubles ever between the regular season and playoffs with 139. This is despite Nikola having played over a thousand fewer games than LeBron. Displaying the historically incredible well-roundedness to his game, Jokic became the first player of all time to drop 14 points and 14 rebounds simultaneously in three straight games. Defensively, Jokic had a monster five stocks, most notably when it comes to defense, digging in for four steals. It was a patented performance that showcased the face of both the Denver Nuggets franchise and the country of Serbia maintains ownership of the NBA. This horned Chicago playset sees Jokic angle off Draymond with 99 strength to set up a clear handoff to MPJ, followed by a screen on pause to set up the triple. 
On a repost from Murray, Jokic's balance and strength allow him to establish his pivot foot while his poise keeps him patient. He then begins his back down dribble, gets two bumps from Green, and on his third bump, elusively and fluidly enters a beautiful drop step to shed him. Draymond still gets back for the solid contest, but it's a beastly Jokic finish. Mixing things up effectively, Joker's next back down sees him instead of drop stepping, shimmying to fake the drop step, then pivoting around to let it fly over his right shoulder for a release that just extends over the Draymond contest. That is tough. For the nitpickers of Jokic's defense, after Thompson flies around this green screen to receive the Steph entry before green rolls, Jokic picks apart this action, reading Clay's hesitancy to attack for himself, and both his body and spot on the floor positioning allow him to knock away the bouncer for a steal. Back on the other side, where despite both the bigger loony being on him along with Gordon clogging the paint, Jokic calmly backs down left and drop steps right to leave Looney in the dust, opening up the easy bucket. Shifting from the post to the perimeter, and this flip thunder action, with Jokic receiving a flawlessly set KCP pin down, gets him space to pop out to the left side of the arc, receive the Jackson swing, and drain the catch and shoot. It's the type of inside out versatile repertoire that was entirely showcased during that record setting performance in the Bay Area which is why, on top of what he had just accomplished, ESPN was way out of line to rank Jokic number two back in October. The skill that Jokic has in terms of his footwork in the post to go along with mesmerizingly soft touch from the perimeter through to the paint, in addition to his jaw-dropping passing range, are all generationally great qualities. What makes this man even more overwhelming for opponents and entertaining to watch in general is that Nikola mixes that fine-tuned skill he's equipped with with an utterly brilliant knowledge, knowledge for the game, an IQ allowing him to scope out offensive plays that can and will be executed well before they've even initially developed. This combination of Joker's abilities and smartness, which are ingrained in his game, so in turn impulsive, make the Serbian's bag extremely ethical. If you're wondering about whether or not Joker is currently firmly placed as the number three seeded Denver Nuggets will win back-to-back -back championships, yeah, don't, don't bet against the perfect boy. Why or why not will Jokic win consecutive NBA championships while winning the Larry in 2024? Best answer gets next video shout out. Today's shout out goes to Vista, who says, great coaches are not easy to come by. It would have been a big mistake to let Coach Kerr leave. People always look at the trio of Steph, Clay, and Draymond as the reason for the Golden State Warriors' success, but they easily forget the mastermind, the maestro, the orchestrator, the magician who's drawn up numerous winning plays in years past, Stephen Douglas Kerr. Appreciate that take and every other. Thank you for watching. This was your boy D-Flow, and I'll see you next video.